Today I'm going to show you how to make biochar. So I have an old paint can, it's been cleaned out, and I drilled a hole in the lid. Uh, the hole in the lid is to let the gases out because we're going to gasify um, some biomass, which in this case is going to be uh, some grape stems. We're making lots of grape juice. I'm going to try a little experiment today. I've not done this before. Um, I've got this, this pulp and all these seeds. I'm going to put a kind of a glob of that right there in the middle. <clears throat> purpose of that will be, um, since it's in the middle, the heat will get to it last. Uh, after the outside has been pyro uh, the outside material has been pyrolyzed, and then um, it will since it's since it's moist it will release steam, which will hopefully open up some more pores in our in our charcoal, so we have uh, a better quality biochar. So we can use anything. I've got so far I've got some grape stems in here. I'm throwing some some wood chips I have. Pack everything down. Also I have like, some peach pits in here. Uh, Popcorn that has been popped, walnut shells. This is kind of an experimental batch, as I've not, I've not made biochar from, for most of this stuff. All right, and I actually got have quite a bit more room here, so we're gonna go ahead and pause this video, and then I'm gonna run upstairs and and grab some more grape stems to add in here. All right, so I ran upstairs and I grabbed some more grape stems. Uh, they're, they're pretty dry, so I can just kind of take them in my hand and crush them up a little bit so they take up less space. And we'll continue filling the bucket. Just pack it in there. Well, and these stems also contain uh, grapes that were grapes that were on the vine that were just really dry. And have seeds in them. We're going to see uh, see how how seeds how what kind of biochar we get out of making seeds. about have it filled up. I like to get as much as I can in here. But after all is said and done, at least with wood, we usually get about a third as much biochar out as we put in raw material. Alright. I think that's about as full as we're going to get her. I'm going to put a little piece of wood over the opening so the little bits don't fall out. I'm gonna, for this batch, I'm going to put it upside down inside my wood stove. Um, usually, I would do this on a fire pit or campfire. But seeing how I don't have that set up here, we're going to do it in the wood stove. So I'm going to take this can. I've got some paper in there to get started. I'm going to take this can and I'm going to put it upside down. So that way when, the, when it's all, all the contents are gasified, um, if we let oxygen in, it'll continue to burn up all the uh, all the char that's in there. So if we put it upside down, it'll be a little harder for the uh, for air to get in there. Set it set it right there. Put some kindling in here. Grab some lath. Old wood lath from. Uh, Demoed plaster walls makes a really great fire starter. Super dry and pine. Now this is more just to get the uh, this wood furnace up to temperature. Um, it's lined with fire bricks. So it's got to get good and hot before it can, or it's got to get warmed up before it can really burn the firewood efficiently. So we're just going to start a fire with some kindling in here to get the in, inside of the box warmed up. Uh, and then we'll, probably after I light it, we'll pause the video and once that's going, uh, we'll wait a little bit and get more, pump some smaller chunks of firewood in there. started. Shut the door, let that get nice and warm. And we'll be back to add some firewood. Alright, so this, the kindling is starting to burn down, it's burning down to coals. Uh, the bottom of the can is starting to get red already. One concern I have about doing it inside my wood furnace is being as this is super insulated, 
Uh, it gets really hot in this furnace. Like I throw a chunk of firewood in there and it just bursts into flames almost instantly. Um, so I am concerned of like possibly melting the can, um, but I guess we shall see. So I'm gonna hand off the camera here and add in a few chunks of, uh, smaller chunks of wood. I throw on a welding glove, it gets quite, it's quite hot in here and inside this. Alright, kind of tucking them in here so they're alongside the, uh, the paint can. See if I can find a shorter one to stick on front. This over the front. A couple more smaller chunks over the sides. Shut this up for a minute and see how it looks. All right, we're gonna open it up and check the fire. See how it's looking. Oh yeah, it's going pretty good. So this will be burning for a while, and we will come back and check it and. Uh, about an hour or so. I don't know if it's going to show up really well on camera. I came down here to check on this and uh, you can kind of see flames from the paint can going down into the grate of the ash pan. So the, uh, the stuff in the paint can is for sure pyrolyzing. In the, in the flame you kind of see coming around the front just when the gas is escaping and then burning. So it's been a little time. Uh, I came down here and added a little bit more wood. Um, the stuff that I originally put in there is kind of burning down quick. Uh, and there's a... Uh, should see some shots uh, that came down here and took a bit of the gases coming out from under the can and burning. Um, I did mention when I put it in here I put the, I put the can upside down so the hole is facing down. When you do it in a campfire um, like in a fire pit, I usually have the, fan, the, the hole in the lid facing either up or, or sideways and that way um, as it gets going it'll start, you'll see like steam and smoke coming out for a little bit and then that, uh, it'll just be wood gas which will eventually catch on fire and it'll just be like a flame coming out of the can and then once that's done flaming it, it just gets to the point where it's like a candle. Um, you won't see really anything coming out of it anymore, and then it's time, uh, it's done. Like, like this, this here is done, so we're going to take it out. It is really hot in here, so I'm going to try and reach in here. And hook the handle with a uh, piece of wood lath with the nail on the end, because I did not have um, anything metal, metal handy. This will work as long as I don't catch it on fire. Okay, so I'm going to take it out. And I am going to shut this because this is blasting a lot of heat out of me right now. And I'm going to flip this upside down so the hole is facing down so that no oxygen can get in there while it's cooling off. And that will prevent the rest of it from burning up. So that is going to be it for tonight. We will be back in the morning after it's had a chance to cool off for a bit. All right, so it's the next day. I didn't actually have to wait a whole day because it only typically takes about a half hour for this to cool off, but it was late and I was tired, so we waited till the next day. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. See how it did. See? See on top we got the, the, the uh, this is the grape stems. Did pretty good. Looks like we got a little chunk of I'm not sure what that is. It just crushes right up now. Oh, we have some uh, some peach pits. Same chart all the way, but don't it's not super uh, um, can't really crunch them. We have some bits of wood, and the wood usually falls apart really easily. 
once it's been charred. <coughs> what else we have in here? Oh, yeah, another piece of wood. See, this just crunches right up really easily and makes makes a really nice char for your garden. And what was this? Uh, looks like this was also a peach pit, but that one that's crunching up a little easier. So maybe some of them didn't didn't completely char all the way through. And everything seems charred in here. Let's dump it all out here. Take a look. Oh, here's that. Oh, this is that clump of, uh, of seeds and skins that I stuck in the middle there. It looks like that, that charred up nicely. I have another sh shell from something that is crumbling right up. <coughs> All right, so overall, it looks like we got a, got a nice batch of char here. So this technically isn't biochar yet. Uh, to make it biochar, we have to inoculate it. Um, wet it, get the get some microbes in there, some food for microbes, and then and then it's ready to add the garden. Uh, but we'll do that in another video. So now you kind of have a general idea of um, how to make biochar, or how to, how to start the process of making biochar. And um, pretty soon we'll put on another video on how to turn this, this char into biochar. <laughs>